Hello everyone, welcome to Into Sports. I'm your host Evan, and today we're going to be mixing it up. We're going to be talking a little bit of college football. Now, we haven't done any college football on Into Sports yet, but I'm excited to bring you guys some of it uh, by doing my top 10 teams. Uh, we just finished week, week 7, and this is where it really starts to get intense in college football. The playoff race, it, it heats up, man. So, I'm very excited to you to share my top 10 teams and compare that to the committee's top 10 teams and see how we agree, see how we differ. So I'll start with my number 10 team. I have the Florida Gators, but the committee has UCF. Now, why I have Florida here is because Dan Mullen has done a great job at Florida developing Felipe Franks, their quarterback, and they're really a true SEC team. They like to uh, power run the ball with LaMichael P. Ryan and Jordan Scarlett, two very skilled backs, and they play good defense. And why they're this high, uh, why they're this high at number ten, is because they've beat LSU, who's number five, according to the committee. They've beat Mississippi State, and they held them to only six points. Nick, Fitz Nick Fitzgerald, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, in my opinion. Only holding them to six points, very impressive, and they are six and one. The committee has them at rank eleven, but I have them at ten because of the game they beat. At, uh, they won against LSU. They did lose to Kentucky though. They lost to Kentucky at home by eleven points. That's a little. That's a little tough to look at and put them this high. But Kentucky, they're a legitimate team. They rank fourteen by the committee, and. That was only in week two, so we can kind of we can kind of push that aside a little bit because it was so early in the season. We are about to go into week eight, so they've looked very impressive ever since that loss. So going into number nine, I have Oklahoma. Now, oh, they had a tough loss to Texas, really really high scoring game. It was it was forty eight to forty five. They lost to Texas at home. And that's why they're not higher. They would be a top 14 for me if they didn't have that loss. The offense is electric. Kyler Murray leading the charge. I mean, you have you have a great head coach, young head coach, offensive coach, Lincoln Riley. I mean, he, he's done great with his quarterbacks. Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield, the two quarterbacks he's, he's uh, had while he's been the head coach at Oklahoma. But the problem has been the defense. They did fire defensive coordinator Mike Stoops a few days ago and I don't think that's I don't think that's really going to help their defense the new coordinator they're going to have to step in they do have the bye week this week that's why they did it this week not another week but I don't think that will really help the defense this year potentially in the future I think it could help Mike Stoops there was rumors that maybe he was still there because of his brother Bob Stoops you know being the head coach uh, there for so long and the the ties in the family but ultimately he was fired because the defense was not getting the job done now they've given up 14 points 21 points 27 21 33 to a Baylor team 40 uh, 48 to Texas the defense that's not a defense that's going to win championships that's why they made the move but on the other hand the offense I see scores of 63 points, 66 points, 48, 49. And they really know how to light it up on the offensive end. That's the Big 12 formula. They don't play defense, but they just score a lot of points. Their main wide receiver, Marquise Brown, alongside CeeDee Lamb, who was Baker Mayfield's favorite target last year. Marquise Brown has evolved into that role this year. And Kyler Murray, he's a Heisman candidate. He's excellent. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the country, in my opinion. Let's move down to number eight. I have Michigan, coached by, of course, Jim Harbaugh. A little bit on the hot seat. But after this win, 38-13 in Wisconsin. That's a quality win that I'm looking at. That's why they're there, Cy. Jim Harbaugh, not so much on the hot seat anymore. I mean, if you can go into that, to that stadium and win by 25 points, on prime time, you're showing that you're a real team. I'm not as big on Michigan 
as maybe the committee is, they have them at number six. Because, I mean, we've seen this narrative for a few years now with Harbaugh. There's, they always advertise, oh, new quarterback. This year, Shea Patterson. You know, he can really utilize all of his potential, his skill set. And that's never really happened. But this year, it's kind of happening. I mean, the defense has always been good under Harbaugh. But the offense is really improving. Now, their record is 6-1. and one. They lost week one to Notre Dame, 24-17. to 17. But it sounds close on paper, but for the first three quarters, it really wasn't a good game. Michigan kind of came back in a little bit of garbage time, but Shea Patterson did not look good in that game. And, I mean, they've improved, I guess. They haven't really played anyone really good besides Wisconsin. But very impressive win. I'm not going to ignore that. They beat uh, Northwestern at home narrowly by three. Blew up Michigan. Or, I'm sorry, Maryland on the road. Whipped up on Nebraska. But, I mean, let's be real. Who isn't whipping up on Nebraska right now? They still haven't got a win. And they beat SMU, Western Michigan. So I'm looking at one quality win and one, one tough loss to a really good team in Notre Dame. But I think that Shea Patterson, I, I know I've been so, saying that this has been the narrative for a while, but maybe this can be the year that the offense really starts to come into its own. They have Michigan State at home uh, this next week, and then the week after that, Penn State. And the last game of the season, of course, Ohio State. If they can win, if they can win all of those, they'll be in the playoff, I think. If they can win two, I think they're going to have to win the Big Twelve cha- or Big Ten Championship if they want to make it to the college football playoff. Now, their, um, their number one running back, of course, Karan Higdon, he's been excellent. And really, they utilize three wide receivers in Donovan Peoples-Jones, Zach Gentry, and Nico Collins. So they're kind of finding balance in the offense. Karan Higdon, of course, their workhorse running back. He's really who they lean on. But now let's move down to number seven, and we got Georgia. Now, Georgia's tough. They're a tough team to rank because I really do think they're good. But they've only played one good team, and they lost by 20, and that is LSU. They lost 36-16 to this last Saturday. So I think they're a really good team, but I can't rank, rank them too high with that loss by 20. Like, that was the first legitimate team they played. Yeah, they played South Carolina on the road, and they won 41-17. I thought that was a pretty impressive win. I'm not going to lie. I did take South Carolina as a potential upset in that game. Didn't work out. But this next week, they have Florida. They can prove it there. Then they have Kentucky. And you thought that wouldn't be a good game at the beginning of the year. Kentucky is ranked 14, and... I mean, this is a real battle for who is going to take the SEC East. I mean, Georgia and Kentucky are the two front runners. So that's a key game. I think they have to win that game. Otherwise, their season is over. And they got to win against Florida this Saturday. Now, their quarterback is Jake Fromm. um, Running back Elijah Hollyfield and DeAndre Swift. Hollyfield has looked really good this year. He's kind of the main guy. It's kind of like an ingram Kamara kind of split. You know, Hollyfield more the power running back. DeAndre Swift more of the the speed guy, the the get-to-the-edge guy, the more the pass catcher. And they have an elite weapon on the outside in Nicole Hardman. You just got to get him the ball, and he can make you plays. But let's move to number... Oh, and uh, actually, let's say um, Georgia is ranked 8th by the committee, and they are my... Seven. So I believe in them a little bit more than the committee. Moving down to number six, we have Texas. Of course, coached by Tom Herman. And let me tell you, I was surprised that they've had this success. Because, I mean, the Tom Herman Texas teams have never got it done. I mean, obviously, they're a huge program. And there's high expectations every year. But those expectations have been somewhat delusional in the last few years. But this year, they're coming a reality Texas is ranked number seven by the committee, and their quarterback, Sam Ellinger, had a shoulder sprain in this last game. It is their bye week right now, but 
he could miss time. And if he does, Shane Bouchelle will be the starter at quarterback. And he's had experience in the past, so I'm not too worried there. Um, this week, they have Oklahoma State on the road. I mean, that's a little bit of a trap game. You're going to Oklahoma State with, I mean, they're not really a great team this year, but they certainly have potential to be better than they are. Right now, they're not ranked. But then the week after that, the game I'm really looking at, they host West Virginia. And I think that will be a really good game. Will Greer, obviously, one of the top Heisman candidates for West Virginia. So let's talk about um, Texas's weapons. They use a two-back system in Keontae Ingram, who's been far, far more effective um, than his counterpart, Trey Watson. If we look at the... Um, the yards per carry. <laughs> let me let me find this real quickly. But um, yeah, Keontae Ingram is really destroying in the yards per carry department, averaging six point one, while Trey Watson only three point eight. So you expect that it'll be Keontae Ingram's backfield going forward, despite Trey Watson having more carries. I, ultimately, I think the the talent wins out. But at the wide receiver position, their main guy, Lil Jordan Humphrey, alongside Colin Johnson. They don't really have a dominant uh, number one option. It's more of a more of a balanced uh, passing attack. And man, I'm surprised with Texas. Because this last win, going into uh, Norman at Oklahoma, and you win 48-45 to against Kyler, Kyler Murray in this high-powered offense. I mean, they've really showed their offense in that game. Now, let's talk about their one loss. And that was to Maryland. The second straight year they lost to Maryland. And it was kind of a weird game. Because Texas, or well, because there was a, a rain delay, a weather delay, I believe. And that lasted for about an hour and a half. And I think that really threw off the tempo. Of Texas was losing before then. But... Since then, I mean, they've been a really good team. If they didn't lose that, they could be a top five team in the country right now. But at number five, I have LSU, coached by Ed Orgeron. You know, there was talks that, you know, everyone at LSU wanted him, wanted him out of town, wanted a new guy to come in. But he's delivered on these expect these higher expectations. And let's look at LSU. They beat Miami week one. They beat Auburn week three. They beat Florida in week six. And they beat Georgia in week seven. I mean, if you talk about resume, they have the best resume in the country. This is why they're this high to me. I honestly don't believe as much in the talent of this football team. But they've really they've performed really well. So I, I think you have to put them this high. I mean, Jake Burrow. I mean, he's done a pretty good job as quarterback. Of course, they are a power run team as they are in the SEC. Their workhorse running back is Nick Brosette. He's been great. If you look at the running backs produced by LSU the last few years, Leonard Fournette and Darius Geis. Could Nick Brosette be that next elite running back? Maybe. He f he's the same style. You know, power running back. Not as much of a, of a pass catcher. But I think he could... Be like a Darius Geis, like a Leonard Fournette. So let's move on to our top four. These are the teams that right now would make the college football playoff, in my opinion. At number four, we have Clemson. We all know about how Kelly Bryant transferred out of the, sco out of the uh, school because Trevor Lawrence was named the starter. Now, Trevor Lawrence was the number two, yeah, number two recruit uh, this year at the quarterback position. So the talent ultimately won out. Now, I'll admit, I was a Kelly Bryant truther. I really did believe in him. Last year, I thought they would win the championship. It didn't happen. But Kelly Bryant, he reminded me a little bit of Deshaun Watson. He, not as much of the passer, but a little bit more of the runner. And their main receiver, Hunter Renfro, I mean, he's old reliable at this point. Senior... 
We know about the success in the national championship games against Alabama. The game winners. I mean, he's tried it true there at the wide receiver position, playing in the, out of the slot. Now, their running back, Travis Etienne, he's been fabulous. I mean, he had a 200-yard game two weeks ago, first of his career. And I'm looking at a running back produced last year, Wayne Gallman. And Etienne, more of a power running back, less of a pass catcher. And I think Etienne is one of the better running backs in the country. Now, they, uh, let's if we look at their resume, they're undefeated. But their only real competition, they went into they went into A and M, Texas A and M. They won by two points. That was very impressive. But besides that, I mean, nothing to show for. They have North Carolina State this week. I think that could be a, a test to see really how good this Clemson team is. I mean, they escaped Syracuse two weeks ago, beat him by four, had to come back with their third-string quarterback. That was an impressive performance in the second half. Lawrence got injured in that game on a scramble. But, I mean, I think this Clemson team is very good, very talented. And their defensive front, it's top two in the country. One of the, of the best defensive lines, I think, of Clemson and I think of Auburn as the perennial two best. So their defense is outstanding. And if Trevor Lawrence can really figure the uh, figure the offense out, I think they'll be competing for another national championship. And it is worth noting that they are ranked three by the committee. And I have them at four. But moving to number three, Ohio State. We all know about the Urban Meyer controversy in the offseason. Well, ultimately, we're past that. He already served his three-game suspension. Now, there will be questions for the rest of his career about his legacy, about how this affects him. But as of this season, going forward, to the end of the season, it doesn't affect him. But one thing that really does affect them as a football team, Nick Bosa leaving the program. I mean, we're talking about, in my opinion, the best player in the country. And he leaves. He's got injured against uh, TCU, by I believe. And... You know, he's a top three pick, likely in this NFL draft. So he didn't want to risk his his draft stock. And that is why he's left the program just playing it safe. And I think that he will still be a top three pick in the draft. But I think that's a huge, a huge, um, huge loss for them. I mean, whenever you lose the best player in the country, that's going to sting. You know, it's really that simple. He added an element to this pass rush that, you know, I mean, one of the best pass, rush, pass rushes in the country with the best pass rusher in the country in Nick Bosa. But they played a lot of the season without him, so I'm not too worried. Like, if, they, if all those games were with Nick Bosa, I'd be more worried. And if I look at Ohio State, I look at their, their claim to fame this year was that win in Happy Valley against Penn State, whiteout conditions, didn't matter. They won by a single point. Of course, there's controversy about the fourth down call by James Franklin. And, but they, they still won. So that's all that matters. That's a quality win. I was very impressed with Heisman candidate Dwayne Haskins going into that environment and the way he delivered, the way he calmed the storm after the, the early deficit. And to me, he's one of the two front runners for Heisman, along with Tua, who we will get to later. Now, the running back, J.K. Dobbins, he's very good. You see that a lot of the running backs in the top 10 teams, they, they have great running backs. J.K. Dobbins, Nick Brosette, Elijah Holyfield, DeAndre Swift, Karan Higdon, all those guys. He's a key part of the offense. And their main wide receiver, Paris Campbell, he's had a great year so far. He has the big playability. So the weapons around Haskins are very good. And if you take into account that Haskins is also very good, Ohio State ranks at number three. Down to number two, we have the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, coached by Brian Kelly. Now, it's been a tale of, of two different different teams for Notre Dame. They, they started out, of course, started their season with Brandon Wimbush at the quarterback position. 
but he really wasn't enough of a threat as a passer. So ultimately, they made the switch to Ian Book, and he's been fabulous. I mean, his passer rating is 170. I mean, you couldn't really ask for more. 75% completion. He's been fabulous ever since getting the starting job. Like, if you look at Brandon Wimbush, only 55% completion. And the year before, 49%. I mean, you're talking below a 50% completion? You can't have that. You can't really have Wimbush as your starting quarterback and still be a contender unless you, like, have the best defense in the country by far. So, moving to a more pass offense with Ian Book, I think that will greatly benefit them. And alongside him, Dexter Williams, after serving the four-game suspension, um, he's been their number one back. It'll be his backfield going forward. Alongside their number one wide receiver, Miles Boykin, who's had a great year so far. So, Ian Book certainly has the weapons, and I believe he has the skill set for Notre Dame to be a national championship contender. If I look at their schedule, they've already beat the Michigan. They've already beat Virginia Tech on the road. They've already beat Stanford by a lot. So if they beat Navy, Northwestern, Florida State, USC, Syracuse, none of those games pop out to me as tough opponents. If they can win out, they will be in the national championship Despite not being in a conference, despite not being able to compete for a conference championship, I think they are, they're a lock if they finish undefeated. But moving in to the number one spot. We know who it is. Let's just get it over with. It's Alabama. The tie. They're rolling right now. Nick Saban doing an excellent job, of course. Twick Tagovailoa, he's by far the leading candidate for Heisman. Well, I mean, you could say Dwayne Haskins is up there, too. But he's the Heisman leader for me. He's been just so good. I mean, they have to pull him out of games early and put in Jalen Hurts because if you look at Alabama's points, 51, 57, 62, 45, 56, 65, and 39. If the offense plays like this, it's not even going to be close. It's not even going to be a question to who wins the college football championship because it's going to be Alabama. I mean, the last few years, they've relied on the defense, the running game, to just grind out victories. But now going to Tua, a legitimate, the best quarterback in the country? This adds a whole new element for Saban and this this Alabama team. And without a doubt, they're the number one team to me. The only thing is that they haven't, they've only played one test, and that was Texas A&M. They beat him by 22. But, I mean, they haven't even broke a sweat playing up these other teams. Like, their resume necessarily isn't there. They do have one, two big games. Two big games. Three. Three. Three big games coming up. They have to win. Uh, they have to win the SEC championship or go, undefe- or go undefeated in the regular season. I think they could still lose the SEC championship, maybe, and make it in. But they got to beat LSU. They got to beat Mississippi State. And they got to beat Auburn. And... I mean, the LSU one, that's going to that's gonna pop out to most people. The one that pops out to me is Mississippi State. I mean, like I said earlier in the show, Nick Fitzgerald, a legitimate, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. That could be more of a trap game for them, but I think they'll handle their business. I mean, they're Alabama. They are the Tide. Without a doubt, my national championships, my, my national champions for this year, and the number one team in the country, they're 7-0. They're ranked number one by the committee. They're ranked number one by me. They are the championship favorite. Now, their main back, Damian Harris. I mean, these these Alabama running backs. I'm thinking about Trent Richardson, who of course didn't pan out in the NFL, but great college, great college career. I'm thinking about TJ Yeldon, Derrick Henry. I mean, there's there's just a surplus of running backs that they've produced that are highly talented, Bro Scarborough even, last year. So the running back position, it's a known commodity that they'll have someone excellent there. This year it's Damian Harris. And their number one option, Jerry Judy. I mean, if you look at Calvin Ridley, Amari Cooper, the last two main receivers out of Alabama, Judy reminds me a little bit of them. I mean, I think he's really that good. And I think he's a great number one wide receiver for Alabama. 
And I, I think they'll just roll over any team they play. That's why college football is a little bit broken to me. Because I kind of know the outcome. This Well, this year at least. The other years, I didn't I didn't know. Like last year, I said earlier, I predicted Clemson to win uh, the national championship last year. But it was indeed Alabama. And it will indeed be Alabama this year. Those are your championships. Write it down. Write it down in Sharpie. Because you don't need to erase it. They're going to win. Hate to say it as a Tennessee fan. But they're going to win the national championship. But anyway, that was today's show at Into Sports. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to, you know, see all the new content. And anyway, thank you for joining us for my top 10 teams in college football.